everyone, and welcome to our interview with Mr. Daryl Lockhart. He's the coach here at Epson Lee High. Um, this is for our 2023 Black History Month celebration. Um, Daryl Lockhart Sr. has always been tall. During his middle school years, he grew a whopping 8 to 10 inches within a two-year period. He was probably destined to play basketball mainly because of his size, um, but after some encouragement from older peers, he eventually learned to play and began his career in basketball, which led him to Auburn, Italy, and Spain. Mm -hmm. He has since coached at Upson Lee and Valdosta State for a number of years. He recently returned home and is currently coaching at Upson Lee High. Coach Lockhart, we're glad to have you here today, and thank you so much for accepting our invitation to be one of our honorees. Well, it's good to be here, and thanks for the introduction and, and uh, uh, the uh, invite. Thank you. Thank you. I'd also like to offer a special thanks to Mr. Chris Fagan. He is our technical magician behind the scenes here, and he will be um, <laughs> he will be um, helping me to get these um, interviews posted on our Facebook page, so keep an eye out for that. Also, keep an eye out for Chris's podcast, Talk Your Culture, that airs on Mondays at 7 p.m. on Facebook, and it's also on um, YouTube and on Instagram. Um, Coach Lockhart, let's start our interview by telling us a little bit about yourself. Tell us um, about your family, what kind of hobbies you have, what places you like to travel. Well, I, I, I don't mean, I don't want it to, to, to sound... Uh, uh, no, I've, I've been lucky. If, mm -hmm. Is that is that concerned? Since traveling, uh, I've traveled a lot of different places, and, and most of the places that I've traveled are some of the ones that I really want to go to. Mm -hmm. um, so I would like to to say that basketball has took me halfway around the world. Mm -hmm. That's that's the way I like to put it. But I'm um, I'm just a normal guy. I'm a little bit taller than others. Uh, I don't talk a lot around people I don't know. Um, I'm just uh, just a humble, and I think I'm humble anyway. Um, I just don't don't get out and, and mingle, mm -hmm. uh, although I should. Uh, I enjoy life, mm -hmm. and what little bit I have left, I'm going to try to live it to the best I can. Yeah. Um, can you tell us how you became interested in playing basketball? Well, like I said, you know, I grew up. I was in Lincoln Park on Highway Street, and and uh, you know, then when I was ten years old, we we moved to uh, uh, the uh, apartments at Fabry Warmer Hill, and uh, during the course of uh, two summers, you know, I, I was before then I was the same size or, or maybe a little bit shorter than everybody else, but over the course of those two summers, I grew a lot, and uh, and and. Being one of the, the taller guys, very thin, by the way. Being one of the taller guys, uh, the older guys would, would play basketball and they would constantly ask me to come on and play because I was tall. Uh, but, you know, I, at, at the age I was in, I, at age I was at, I, w I was scared. I, was, I didn't want to get down there because they was beating each other up, basically. <laughs> um, but they kept hounding me, kept hounding me, and one day I couldn't, I didn't have any excuse, so I went down and I played. and. It wasn't that bad, and uh, from then on, I just started playing uh, as much as I can. Uh, I got, I went out before all this started. I went out for the middle school team, uh, the, and I got cut my seventh grade year, and it kind of upset me. Mm -hmm. I went home and I started playing basketball and playing basketball, and, and all of a sudden, come next year, I made the team, and eventually, I started started. Uh, and I was in the lineup, mm -hmm. and we went. That year, I don't remember the year. It's been so long ago, but we went. We lost one game that year. We got all the way to the state championship match down in Savannah, and we lost by 1.57, oh, wow. 58. Mm. Uh, yeah, it was a heartbreaker. But, you know, I didn't think I would – I didn't think I was that good at that time. Mm -hmm. I just I just played the position, center, rebound, block shots, and scored the little layups that I had. But um, – Evidently, uh, the high school coaches liked it, and uh, from there I went to the high school, and uh, the rest is history. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of come full circle. Yeah. You said it was Savannah? Savannah. Yeah, um, kind of come full circle, don't you think? Um, you was able to uh, mm -hmm. put together a winning streak with um, the 2016-17 group. Yeah. 
And that winning streak was put to an end by Savannah, <laughs> which created the yeah. 63 and 0. Yeah. You know, it was. That kind of. It's kind of neat. I never knew that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I never thought about that. And, uh, but, uh, yeah, that's that's basically it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Um, were you recruited to play at Auburn straight from Upson Lee? Um, tell us how, about some of your experience at Auburn. Well, it's not Upson Lee. Yeah. Well, Robert E. Lee. Robert e. Lee. Yeah. I'm sorry. I was, um, <laughs> I was a fortunate one because of my size. Um, uh, there was a all-star camp in Millersville, Georgia, called the Bill Cronauer BC All-Stars, mm-hmm. where they bring in players from all over the country, top mm-hmm. players from all over the country. And I remember walking in there. I'm nervous. I'm, I was so nervous. You know, I walked with a, with my head down a lot. And I walked in, and guys was playing, and uh, they was picking teams, and I wanted to play. So, you know, I was trying to get in, get in line to pick, and the guys they didn't pick me. And then I heard somebody say, well, you're going to wish you had a pick them later. <laughs> so, I mean, I, I don't know who it was, but I heard him say it. Um, uh, and it was, uh, it was hot. There was no air conditioning. Uh, we had all the food we want when we ate, but it was just mainly basketball. I mean, it was, it was brutal. Uh, mm-hmm. um, I went down there. I was in shape. Uh, so I played well. I played well enough to be picked in the top 20. Wow. And, uh, and that was uh, the top one. Being in the top 20 players in the country, that was great for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's yeah. It's a lot of kids. Yeah. 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 Top 20. Yeah. yeah. You know, we had, and, and just about all of them was there. Dominique Wilkin, Ralph Sampson, uh, uh, a lot of guys was there. Uh, we, uh, I started getting letters before then because of my side. My first time getting a, uh, interest letter was from the University of Clemson. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think I got that at the at the beginning of the 10th grade year. And uh, I was excited. And my coach talked, my coach, he said, because I wasn't doing really well at school. Well, I was doing horrible at school. My coach talked to me, Jim Fowler. He said, look, he said, he said, he said they're going to come in the end. But if you ain't got your grades together, you're not going, they're not even going to give you a second look. And I went home that same day, and my father, uh, Mr. Jack Lockhart, he sat down and he talked to me. You know, the father, the son talked to me. <laughs> <laughs> he sat down and he held the basketball up. He said, you see this little thing right here? This thing right here can get you anywhere you want to go. And I kind of pushed it off. You know, I was young then. I, was, mm-hmm. I said, man, well, I'm saying, man, what you talking about? This ain't going to happen. <laughs> and uh, he said, but you got to get things in order. Mm-hmm. He says, there's, there's God. And there's family, there's school, and there's basketball. And they say anything interfere with those four top things, then you need to let it go. And so I lived by that rule. And uh, so I got back in, got back in school from that day. I started hitting the books. Mm-hmm. And I was, I, was, uh, I was on the honor roll every year after that. And... Uh, the letters start coming in. The interest start coming in. You know, as I continue to play and get better, and it got to a point where uh, my coach said, "Look, I just handle all this, and you just concentrate on school and basketball." So he took care of a lot of a lot of the stuff, and <clears throat> because I couldn't I couldn't see them all. I mean, they was at my school every day. Um, I got I don't want to be misquoted, but I believe I got over two hundred and fifty offers. Wow. Yeah. From major schools, and that was me being like I am. You know, that's nothing. I, I don't. I don't know. But you know, when I think about it, and I think about the kids of today, nobody's getting those kind of offers. Mm-hmm. Well, first of all, because they're not my size. Mm-hmm. Although I think some of the guys are way more talented than I was. Mm-hmm. Um, but the main thing is that. The ones that are not getting those offers are not hitting the books like like we did, as right. as, as you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, yeah, and I'm not making up any excuses, but there are more distractions now for our young kids than there was when I was there. No, this is true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. not an excuse. Yeah. No, it's so, just the truth. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> so, so, I mean, just to get, and then the answer to your question is, there were six schools I could pick to go visit. 
Mm -hmm. uh, back then, you can go visit schools. I don't know what it is now, but I chose um, I chose Kentucky. I chose uh, mm, Michigan. I chose Maryland. I chose uh, Las Vegas, and then I went to Clemson. And I chose um, and then Auburn. I just went over there there too, and in and, and, and Georgia, I did the same thing. But I chose those uh, schools to go to, and I was really, I, I was really thinking about Michigan and Las Vegas. And my father said, "Look," he said, "Anything happened, I can't get to you in a day." Mm -hmm. So, and my choices were from Georgia to Auburn to Clemson. Then I went to Auburn, and Georgia. And the reason I didn't go to Georgia was because they was bringing in all these all Americans, and uh, I figured, you know, they bringing in. All American in my position, then there's going to be a conflict, and I wanted to play right away, mm -hmm. so I chose to go to Auburn. Um, that was a, that was the that was my mindset, and I went to Auburn, and I and I and I, I started playing my freshman year. Yeah, oh. yeah, good, good. So, um, did you graduate from Auburn before you went to Spain and Italy? I did not graduate from Auburn, but when mm -hmm. I did, I played uh, a number of years in Italy and Spain, and I came back, and I went to. I got in contact with the guy who recruited me to go to Auburn, mm -hmm. Herbert Green. He was an assistant at Auburn at the time. At Columbus State, he was a basketball coach and the athletic director. Mm -hmm. So I got in touch with him, stayed in touch with him. And I and uh, I got there and said, look, I want to come back to school. He said, fine, come on. And he helped me get in. Mm -hmm. And I got my bachelor for Columbus State. Very good. And then I went to Albany State University and got my master's. Yeah. Very good. Congratulations. Yeah. Um, so, um, your bachelor's, was that to coach or did you I teach coach, another I got, my, I got mm -hmm. a coaching, I started coaching mm -hmm. when I got my bachelor's. Gotcha. As head coach, that is. As head coach, yeah. yes. Okay. Um, tell us about playing in Italy and Spain. What was it like playing ball in another country? Playing ball is the same. Um, the only difference is that maybe a couple of rules or the language. Mm -hmm. But on the basketball court, I felt at home. Mm -hmm. Away from the basketball court, it was you know I was fish out of water because I couldn't <laughs> speak the language. Um, mm -hmm. But it's pretty much the same. It's just the language. Yeah. yeah. Were you there just during basketball season and then you come home, or how did that work? I was there mainly. Left to go in August. In uh, August, and I was there until uh, early May. Early oh, okay. May of the, the, the following year. So. And how many years were you there? I was there. Uh, off and on, uh, let's see, about 11 or 12 years. Wow. Yeah, 11 or 12 years, maybe 13. Yeah, that was a yeah. good chunk of your adult, uh, young adult I, life. I, yeah. I, great experience, though. Yes, yeah. sounds like it. Yeah. Sounds like it. What would you say that you're the most passionate about when it comes to making a positive impact on your community? Um, I think... Um, by dealing with all the issues that 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 I've gone through, um, uh, with with fans and with with irate parents, um, I've always tried to be positive. Uh, I, 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 I don't I don't confront. I just let it roll off my back mm -hmm. uh, because it it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't bother me, and I think that's that's pretty much my my even keel. I think is pretty pretty much. Mm -hmm. I, now a lot of people think I'm that way. All the time, not that way. All the time, especially with my kids, when my when players are not playing right. But most of the time, I'm, I'm positive and even keel, and and understanding that this game, everybody else loves it so much that sometimes they get a little distorted and they have to latch out mm -hmm. and say bad things uh, about the game or about the way this game was 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 doing was mm -hmm. played or coached. Uh, I understand that. I mean, I think you know. See what what people don't understand. This is an emotional game. Mm -hmm. And just because you're sitting up in the stand don't mean you're not a part of it. Right. I mm -hmm. mean, you love you love this game. If you love something and you think something should be done this way or that way, then, of course, it's just like watching TV. Mm -hmm. and, you know, people watch TV and they say, oh, man, they are, no, no, no. You know, that's 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 part of it. Mm -hmm. That's part of it. I, and I, I don't I don't I don't disagree with them. Let them say what they have to say. And eventually things would thing would calm down with those individuals. 
Yeah. Yeah, that's how that's how I look at it. Yeah. Yeah, so, I've definitely been on both sides of the spectrum yeah. when when, when that's concerned. Uh, yeah. Um, it didn't really get close to me yeah. up until my nephew began to play. Right. Uh, right. Be just chatter. Be in the working barbershop, of course. Yeah. Yeah. He'd just be chatter, and you know, it was random chatter. Every mm -hmm. coach goes through it. Yeah. You know, that's just how I looked at it. But yeah. when my nephew came to play, it it, it became personal. And um, at first, yeah, it did feel like a situation where, you know, I was embodying how everybody else felt. Yeah. That really wasn't the case for me or, or his mother. You know, we just, we knew we had prepared him to be the best player for whoever he coached for. Mm -hmm. We just wanted to make sure that the coach understood that level of passion we had. And mm -hmm. then once, you know, we got on the same playing field, it was it was it was the same. And I spent yeah. a lot of time uh trying to explain things to parents that they just didn't understand yeah. about mm -hmm. the game right. or with him. Because there was things I didn't know until I was able to talk to my nephew about certain things and I'm like, Okay, well this is understandable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I've been on both sides of that, so I know yeah. I know exactly what he's talking about. Right. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm quiet, but I'm stubborn. I, I, I tend to do things the way I want to do them. Um, sometimes, you know, I'm not perfect. I, I, I admit, I don't know no coach that is, but, you know. Um, but, you know, I, I, I've been in this thing so long, sometimes I tend to, I, I mean, I, I just, I just it's, it's either my way or my way. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't. I don't I'm just saying, I don't, I don't change the way I coach. I mean, that's mm -hmm. that you have to be that. You have to be that, especially if you you really think you're uh, doing. I, I always tell my guys, I say, believe in what you're doing. Believe in what you're doing to a point where 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 this is what you're doing, and I want you to believe in. It because if you don't believe in it, then how are you going to perform it every mm -hmm. night? And when you get strong-minded guys who believe in what they're doing, and that can play, by the way, <laughs> then you get the the state titles. Mm -hmm. Then you get the state titles. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, who are some people in your life that have been your greatest influence and encouragement? Well, you know, my family, my, my mom, daughter, my mom, father, and, and uh, my sisters. I got three sisters. I had some some um, some uncles that was that's that's been great to me and very influential. Uh, my, my 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 basketball coaches, all of them. Mm -hmm. uh, I still talk to my college coach today. I still talk to my high school coach, Mr. Fowler, today, mm -hmm. and I took a little bit. Of, I took a little bit from all the guys that that coached me and, and 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 taught me how to play. Even some of the guys, the older guys, that when I was coming up, mm -hmm. I mean, I took a little bit from them. You know, uh, but do you still stay in touch with any of them? I stay in touch with most of them. Mm -hmm. um, guys in Spain, I still stay in touch with touch with the guys in Spain. The coaches in Spain, mm -hmm. the coaches in Italy. Uh, um, it's just, uh, I think every player who's played on the level that I've played, and who only even as college, just took something from everybody, even their coaches. Mm -hmm. um, I had I had good coaches and I had bad coaches, but not all the bad coaches was bad. Right. Some of the things was good, so mm -hmm. I just took the good parts and, and wise I moved on. choice. Yes, yeah. very good. So, out of all of your achievements, what would you say was your most memorable? What stands out to you? Uh, by far, I think my, my getting my bachelor's degree, mm -hmm. going on to get my master's, because without those, the doors wouldn't open. That's they right. Wouldn't open. Uh, no matter, no matter how far or how good of a coach I am, uh, the doors would not have opened if I hadn't got my degree. Um, mm -hmm. And my father, and, and another thing that that uh, that has helped me, my father always told me, and I think I wrote that down. He always told me, he said, look. He said, even the best coaches in the world can't win without the guard on the mm -hmm. side. And the day he told me that, we was having a little conversation. I said, I said, I want to win. This I won a state title. I said, I want to win. I said, I want to win. He said, look, he said, you're going to win, but you can't win the big one without guard. Mm -hmm. so, so then I, I started preparing myself. I, I dedicated more of my time to the man upstairs. And, Boom. I got my hands on some guys that could really play <laughs> and things. It just, it just happened. It just happened. Yeah. It just happened. I, I, I'm, I'm blessed. I, I, I told you, I, I'm blessed uh, mm -hmm. from having, from having that experience, from, from not having the talent.
to having all the talent in the world, it's, it's, it's been a blessing. It really has. That's and, exciting. And he keeps giving. Yep. 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 Um, what are some challenges that you faced in the past, and how did they help you grow? Well, you know, growing up tall and long and lanky, uh, <laughs> you have to deal with a lot of harassment. Yeah. You know, kids playing jokes on you. Yeah. Anytime uh, there's something different about you, the right. kids seem to right. latch onto that. Yeah. In, in the time frame from when you was young, I can imagine also. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you know, my buddies play tricks on me, but you know, I, I, you know, they do it all the time. They did it all the time. So I, I expect that from them. But you know, when you got other kids that don't know you playing tricks on you, that's, that's a little hard to take. Mm -hmm. It's hard to take, but look, I, I took it with a grain of salt and it, um, I, I am here today. That's so, right. so I, I mean, I did my share of, of, of pranking too, so but uh, yeah, I had to take a lot of that because of my size. And you mm -hmm. know, I was six at, in middle school. I, I I was six six and I weighed one hundred fifty two pounds, fifty five pounds. So wow, so I had to take a lot of a lot of a lot of that stuff. Yeah. You know. mm -hmm. um, do you have any goals or um, things that you're used to have yet to accomplish that you'd like to share with us today? Mm -hmm. My only goal is to make sure that every guy that I coach have an have a opportunity to go to, go to school, whether it's playing basketball or not, mm -hmm. and get a degree. Mm -hmm. Because, if you, if, and, and all the guys that play for me know this, if, if you get that degree, doors will open up. If you don't, you're stuck in the same place that you came from. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to be that way. Uh, so my goal is to make sure that all these guys understand that and aware and is aware of all those opportunities, mm -hmm. and I try to push them that way. Try to push them that way. You told me that you hope one of them come back and take your place when you. I do. I still got too old to do it. I'm still looking for him. <laughs> I, I, I got my mind on somebody, mm -hmm. uh -huh. but I don't know if he want to come back. Maybe you can help me with that. <laughs> we talking about the same person. Yeah, we are. We are. Yeah, yeah. Hot pursuit for his personal career first. I know. I, I know. Yeah, I know. That. I know. That. Yeah. I think that he said that some, at some point in his life to me that that's what he wanted to do. So yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Awesome. Um, let me move this over here so I can make sure this vocal coming through. Um. All right. So when you play. And, and in that time span, for at least about 15, 20 years, the game was played inside first and then outside, mainly a big man's game. Right. Basically, if you had a dominating big man with right. a lot of skills, right. you stood the chance of winning a lot of basketball right. games. Whereas as time progressed to the present time, the game kind of changed over to guard play. Mm -hmm. You know, and almost like the big men almost start playing like guards, yeah. although they still have the talent yeah. to play around the paint. With that being said, how difficult was it for you to uh, register that and um, have that understanding when you probably have had anywhere from 10 guys, 6'5 over, but this one particular guy, who just went number one overall in the NFL draft. How difficult was it for you to transition that style when having such a talent like that finally emerge in your well, present? Well, his, his, his talent, his talent was, was his love for his teammates because he didn't care about scoring. All he wanted to do was rebound and, and do all the dirty stuff. Of course, he scored, but he didn't, we had to make him score his senior year. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't care about scoring. <laughs> He wanted to set the picks. He wanted to get the offensive rebound. He wanted to block the shots. He wanted to get the defensive rebounds. And, and, and that itself, you don't find that in a lot of people today. Everybody wants to get the points. They don't even think about what, 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 what Mr. Mr. Walker was doing. Mm -hmm. But Mr. Walker was a key for us. He was a key for us all those years, uh, a big key, because he let everybody else do what they, do what they was good at. Mm -hmm. you know? yeah. And if you, if you, they, they, weren't afraid, they weren't afraid to make mistakes on defense. Because he was the eraser. Did he, did he keep the locker room straight? He kept the locker room straight. <laughs> well, your nephew kept the locker room straight, but, oh, okay. <laughs> but 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 yeah, he did. He and he would say something. He let everybody know when he get mad, and everybody would listen. Yeah. And then yeah. Right. 
Um, speaking of a nephew, I was texting him before I came over here, yeah. and we was just texting about some old memories that we have over here playing pickup. Uh, yeah. And uh, he told me this. I told him that I was getting ready to come over here and do this mm -hmm. with you. And he told me to say, "D lock in the house." <laughs> That's for you, Ty. He told me to say that. All right, but over here, there is a myth about who is the better class that you've had over the years. Now, I know you said don't ask you no controversial okay. question. You do not have to answer this question if you don't want to, but I have to ask this question because I am tired of these jokers in here arguing every day. Can you tell me who is your particular better class of all time? He's putting you on the spot, isn't he? Putting me on the spot. <laughs> hey, you don't have the answer. No, I'm, I'm, I'm going to answer this. I'm going to answer the best way I can answer it. You know, um, that class that went to the Final Eight was, was, was good because they was physical. They would beat your behind. The, the class that won state title was a better basketball team. I don't know who would have won. I just say it was a better basketball team. There's no doubt. But the class that went to the final eight was was as physical as they come, mm -hmm. and I and I loved them. I loved them. Mm -hmm. I loved yeah, them. I really I, did. Um, I tell them that all the time. Actually, I tell them that maybe that class you're talking about roster mm -hmm. from top to bottom, talent yeah. is better. But that group that won the title, those six seven guys had a unification. Yep. Mm -hmm. It just made them one. Yep. And it was a tough group to beat. It was tough to beat. When you got beat. unity, I don't care what the talent yep. looks like. That's true. Mm -hmm. we, we're speaking of unity as if in knowing what that guy's going to do. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, was just, it was just like they were reading their mind. It was like a mind play. I mean, it was just, and I go back and watch some of the films of that, that championship squad. It, I mean, it's, 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 it's really beautiful. It's really, it's really deep. Uh, um, the way they did certain things. Mm -hmm. uh, when one guy leave out, the other guy steps in to take his place and take on more responsibility. I mean, it's, 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 oof. it's really, it's really nice. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, and I don't know if we'll ever get back to that point. Uh, uh, not in my lifetime, mm -hmm. <laughs> but, but eventually I hope that somebody uh, comes along and, and, and have that kind of unity, have that kind of togetherness, because these guys love each other. They still, they still talk today, mm -hmm. and that's the thing. That's the thing about this that group. Um, you know. One thing I learned from that group was to tell other men, "I love you." Yeah. I just thought it was so strange. Yeah. Like these guys would say this to each other yeah. all the time, and yeah. I was like, "Y'all weird," <laughs> <laughs> and, you know. And they kind of taught me about it. And I kind of invited, I kind of took that on, you know. Mm -hmm. I learned that from from their love for each other to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, you could, you could see it. I mean, it was it wasn't it wasn't no no secret. It wasn't spoken, but you could see it in the way they played. Mm -hmm. You know, they cared about each other, and they cared about the game. They cared about the game, and this you know, and 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 that's the most. And they put in work. They put the work in. It just didn't happen overnight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you got guys now who hit a three, who do something good once and think they're the best thing in the world. These guys put the work in. I mean, that's, that's, this your nephew was always in the gym. And then he pulled others along with him. And, and you know what Mr. Walker was doing. And then they played almost every weekend together. Mm -hmm. And it's just, uh, they, they spent more time together than... Than, than they did with their parents. Yeah. So, yeah. so, but but it all pays off. It all paid off. It all paid off. And every last one of those guys could have went to school on scholarship. Um, some of them decided they didn't want to go. Um, you know, and some went and then came back home. Uh, but uh, a great great group of guys. And I was hoping that I could get one of them to come back and help me. I got my son now. But, um, I need I need a couple more guys. I really do. Mm -hmm. I need a couple more guys. I need young guys who know what I did when I was coaching mm -hmm. them, so that they can relate. I, to they can relate guys. to young guys. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. And hopefully, hopefully, somewhere uh, quickly, I I'll get a couple. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yes, I, I mean I, that's that's my definition of those two group of teams. Uh, we have a, a basketball team. Uh, 
and a bunch of physical guys. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, yeah, and I, I don't, I mean, the win and loss is, is not that important to me, but I, I just love both of those, both of those groups. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you have anything else, Chris? No, 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 that was it. All right, great <laughs> yeah. questions, great questions. Um, I have one final question, and okay. then we'll let you okay. go on back to school. Okay. But I really want to know if you could leave a word for our youth today to encourage them to make an impact um, in their world and, and in the community. Well, just those four things I, I said that my father said, you know, this is, uh, you know, family, uh, guard, or, I mean, whichever, or family and guard, all right, and then uh, schoolwork, and then whatever sports you play, all right, play it to your best ability. And, and, and work hard at it because, you know, just because your father was uh, a great player don't mean you're going to be a great player because mm -hmm. you got to work at whatever. You got to work at your craft, mm -hmm. work at it. And uh, because that's something that you're good at. It may not be the thing that you want to do, but we're good at it. Everybody on this earth is good at something mm -hmm. and we can be better at it if we work at it. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Well, thank you so much for spending time with us today. Okay. We appreciate it. We look forward to seeing you on the 26th. Yes, ma'am.